Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Now, it's real time. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined in the studio by Derek Bowman. Derek, it's nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked before. I've had a chance to talk with folks from ODFW throughout the years many times. One of my original uh, uh, interviews every Friday morning, because we used to have a Friday morning show, we'd start it with ODFW. We did that for like two years. Uh, so we go way back, okay? Now, we're going to talk about something today that's going to be, again, for a lot of people in this state, absolutely new. M maybe not even heard of, but I'm assuming that there's a lot more educated folks out there than some might think, but chronic wasting disease, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I don't have any experience with it, but I did get to hunt in Wyoming. They were really looking for that. Uh, have had friends that have lived in the Midwest where it's decimated their herds completely. Uh, but now we're, we're thinking that it might be uh, approaching Oregon, right? And it's been found in Idaho. We've talked about this just prior to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one, though, and I want to make sure that I get this right. In North America, chronic wasting disease has impacted 31 states, and we're not one of them yet? Correct. Okay, now this is something that you all got to pay attention to. Four Canadian provinces, where some of us being Americans might say that's where it came from, but I, hey, I didn't Google too much, okay? Um, hunters and biologists across the country are talking about it. What exactly is chronic wasting disease and why is it such a big deal, especially for us now here in Oregon? Yeah, so chronic wasting disease, or CWD as we call it, um, is an infectious disease that impacts cervids, so deer and elk, moose, those types of species. Okay. The issues with it is that it is always lethal and it's untreatable. And so this wow. disease is spread between individual animals and also in the environment. And it's a really unique disease in that an animal might have it for years, but it doesn't show any symptoms. So it's really challenging to try to get ahead of, and that's what Oregon's trying to do is be more proactive on that front. That's scary as it can be. Yeah. So it takes years to become maybe not noticeable, but something that you can find in them if I get in this Yes, yeah, well, you can find it quick. It's just the symptoms don't start to show up for okay. years. And so that's why it's important to start to do some testing every chance you have, because if you wait until the symptoms are showing, you're already behind. Right, and, and we certainly don't want that to happen. This is why we're here trying to get this education out there to everyone. Now, Ryan, real quickly, throw that, that map back up. I want to show you the size uh, of where the where chronic wasting disease has been found. And if you look at that little pocket there in the west side of Idaho, you can see uh, that, yeah, that's right on our doorstep, everyone. Is it strictly coming from the uh, east to the west, or is it possible that it could have jumped anywhere else, or, I mean, is it just east to the west? Yeah, so the closest documented case of CWD is just right across the border in Idaho. However, we are sampling statewide. We don't want to just look in one corner of the state and have it pop up behind us. And that's happened in other states. Okay. So we are looking at sampling these animals clear across the state, gotcha. um, not just the Northeast. All right, so that leads me, you kind of answer my next question, which is, is it here in Oregon? So it hasn't been found here, legitimately tested here in Oregon yet. Yeah, so we've been testing for decades, actually, in Oregon. Really? We've collected and, and processed over 27,000 samples. Wow. But obviously, with it being this close and learning more and more from those other states that have had this problem for mm -hmm. a long time, we right. know that we need to be more proactive, and so that's why we're, we're taking this full frontal approach. Well, the, now, I don't know. I'm, 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 I was about to say is you guys are well in front of it, at least from what I'm understanding from the, having the chance to talk with you guys a little bit about it, not having it in the state, we're in front of it, right? So there's got to be ways that as hunters, because uh, we're obviously the ones that are going to be taking the animals, uh, can help, and that's obviously going to be how uh, do we actually do that? So it sounds like we're really important, right? That we're key to making this, you know, not necessarily staving it off, but how, how do we do that? How, as hunters, how can we help? So there's a number of things that hunters can do. First off, hunters are really knowledgeable on this topic. Mm -hmm. They care very deeply about this topic. 100%. So please continue to share that knowledge with family and friends and let them know what it is and what they can do to help. Secondly, hunters are on the front line of things to help in this sample collection. Hunters care very deeply about deer and elk populations, so all we're asking for is five minutes of your time right. to help us get that information so we can continue to be uh, very detailed in our approach and trying to detect it if it gets here. All right, now that goes right to the obvious question. How in the world do we do that? So it comes into working with ODFW and our partners to collect these samples from these animals that you harvest. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is that we have set up, we have check stations set up around the state. Mm -hmm. Those aren't always open and they're limited in their location. 
We've got multiple offices around the state that you can come to. We just recommend you call ahead beforehand to arrange an appointment to make sure there's somebody on staff there that can take the sample and not waste any of your time. But we also have samples that can be collected from meat processors and taxidermists now. Okay. So it's an all hands on deck to try to get our hands on these samples so that way we can increase our monitoring and have a greater level of confidence about if CBD, CWD is here or not and if it is we can respond quickly. So it's absolutely the animal itself. The animal itself has to be checked. It's not like hey we can send you a hair sample or uh, pull a tooth and send it in. It, they have to be checked. Correct and so it's Right now, the only test is from uh, basically the central nervous system, so like a brain stem sample or a, okay. a, a lymph node. So unfortunately, that means the animal has to be dead. We're working on live samples, but yes, we get that animal in our possession. We take those quick little samples. We do pop a tooth as well for oh, aging. Okay. Right. So when you come in and you supply us that information, you're also getting age of the animal of harvest as well. Right, which is going to be important because you said it takes a long time for this to, you know, prop. Pro process through the animal. Yeah. Is that information that's relevant? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I, we're going to get to a couple of questions here. I mean, for me, you all have heard me talk about it, and I said it even earlier. You ain't eating the horns. Okay, they look cool, right? You can put them on the wall. Hey, look, Bob, I got me a big old bull. Okay, that's great. But that's not why I'm in the woods. Okay, I'm in the woods because I want to eat them. I want the perfect meat. I want the meat that I am comfortable with giving my daughter, my, my wife, my fr family and friends. And we want to be confident that we can. This is going to be a question that I'm going to be posing to you here coming back. So I hope that you're prepared for that. Because, you know, I might be giggling a little bit. But this is important stuff. And like I mentioned prior to the show starting and even my little Facebook hit there, as the true conservationist, and, and I say it that way because I have been slammed for 15 years from other groups out there that say to the contrary, which is absolutely false, okay, uh, the true conservationists are the hunters and the fishermen that are out there. We want to help. We want to do what we can, but it's going to take a little effort. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. I mean, but not a whole lot. We're going to find out how you can actually do that, what it actually looks like. What's my deer going to be like when I get done giving it to you? And can we eat the thing, right? And one of our favorite things in the world to do as hunters is what? To take that back strap and do Throw it what? right on the grill in the camp. As soon as we get it done, right? Now, myself, I'll be a little, I will admit, we like to hang it for a little bit if possible. But no, that tenderloin is going on right away. I mean, it's just, it's like a, a, a reward for doing things the right way. We're going to talk about that with Derek, again, from ODFW in just a couple of minutes. Pay attention here, everyone. And during this break, if you need to, check it out on Google and get some little bit more info as well. We'll be right back with Derek from ODFW. <laughs> 